Are you just starting out on YouTube and Instagram but don't know anything about photography? Today, we're gonna be talking about how to take photos, how to edit, and how to edit on your phone. In fact, we've got Cassie and Richie from To The Nines. I was able to interview them years ago at an event called Vlogger Fair. Let's roll that reel of us, uh, that throwback video and kind of the journey to get where you're at now. We started after high school, um, specifically after high school because we felt like we were going to be judged if we started during high school. So we're going to be talking to them. And they've, <laughs> they're already on here right now. Uh, they have continued to succeed. But one of the things that I love about them is they're very practical. And they've got a lot of great tips for how to edit photos on your phone with an app. So you don't even need a computer. I think these days you can not only shoot video, uh, shoot photos, but edit right on your phone. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, get ready for some fire, some wisdom, some YouTube and Instagram magic. We're going to get right into it coming up. YouTube Secrets is out now. Learn the strategies of today's top video influencers in this step-by-step -step YouTube success playbook. Get your copy today at tubesecretsbook.com. That's right. Welcome to Video Influencers. My name is Benji Travis, and we're helping build your influence income impact with online videos. I know we're talking about Instagram and photos today, but it's all about that video. Uh, make sure you check us out on socials. You know, Sean Cannell and I, we started this channel to help you guys crush it here on YouTube. But social media is very important. Today, we're specifically talking about photography and video and editing and the things to consider because if you haven't picked up a camera before, you don't know about framing and colors and lighting and all that stuff. We're gonna be diving into some uh, basic tips and some strategies for you guys to post dope content to build your influence so that you can get that traffic to your video. Um, and without further ado, I wanna introduce Cassie and Richie. Um, there's this little great video of them, and these are the videos on To The Nines. You know, they've uh, been building an audience for years on here. I was able to interview them not too long ago. Fashion-centric lookbooks, uh, lifestyle vlogs on their channels. You know, they've been uh, creating amazing content also on Instagram. So if you want to check them out, we're going to put all the links to their channels in the description. Their photography is amazing. But one crazy thing we're going to be talking about today is uh, it's not always digital cameras they're using. So uh, they built an amazing audience, a 600,000 plus subscribers. We've got Casting Richie of Two the Nines. What's up? Hello. <laughs> How are you guys Sorry, doing? Yeah. Great. We we drove from uh, Vancouver to Seattle, so it's nice to be here. I, I don't remember the last time I was here, but I really enjoy the scenery and the drive up mm -hmm. was really fun, especially because we listened to a Crime Junkies podcast mm -hmm. late last night. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to be here. I was here like a few weeks ago because I went to Jollibee with my family. <laughs> Jollibee? Well, yeah. you guys don't have Jollibee don't up there? Know. See, that's even like the border patrol guys are, they see Filipinos roll in from the from Vancouver and they're like, oh, are you here to go to Jollibee? And <laughs> half the time it's a yes, so. That's cool, yeah. If you guys if you guys don't know what Jollibee is, that is a Filipino fast food restaurant that Filipinos love. And uh, chicken. It basically down there in South Center, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, all right, we're going to get started here. Um, the first thing I want to dive into is what would be your first tip for a beginner? We're going to dive into the actual tips a little bit later mm -hmm. um, after we get into your guys' story. But what would be the first tip that you would give to somebody that's never picked up a camera, um, but to be able to take a dope photo on their phone? Mm, I think a general tip that I would give to anyone that wants to pursue editing photography is that really nowadays there's no right way or there shouldn't be a right way to do it. Yeah. Obviously, yes, in the technical aspect, if you're going to shoot film, mm -hmm. um, like photos that you're going to sell, of course, you're going to have to learn like the different specs of the camera and like learn how to use the camera, the different settings, aperture, whatever. But when it comes to social media, you don't really need to know all of that. I feel like there's a thousand and one possibilities to get to the end result. Yeah. And you don't need to follow a specific like pattern or yeah. like you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You can figure out for figure it out for yourself and like get little pieces of information and just 
you know, come yeah. up with a photo on your own. Yeah. Totally. What, what would be your tip for a beginner? I think, um, I mean, using your phone is like the easiest way oh, to, totally. to, to just snap a photo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that like for us, the most important thing is lighting and the setting itself. Yeah. And like what you said earlier, like the setting doesn't even have to be nice for you mm-hmm. to like yeah. take cool photos yeah yeah i agree you know that's yeah. the thing with uh phones with these apps it's crazy even the iphones app right the iphones photo app mm-hmm. yeah like the automatic settings of the little magic bar like it or, you know the little wand mm-hmm. like you press that and it's just like perfect already yeah. oh, and totally. the iphone 11 is a game changer oh, i've been saying that Listen, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna get that soon <laughs> oh for sure and so if you guys so that's the first tips you guys we're gonna be diving into more here yeah. soon but let's talk about your channel how did you guys even come up with the idea to start this? Like, I saw your first video, and you got well, not it wasn't your first video. I think it's, our first video is privated, actually. Oh, yeah, really? Because it, it got copyright. You oh, know. we didn't know anything about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's probably not trust on our me. Channel. That happens. In <laughs> yeah. fact, Judy's. Uh, so Judy, my wife. Um, like the first 10 videos she uploaded all got muted Mm -hmm. and they put some random songs over it because she was using mainstream music. That's what happens. We didn't know. But so the, uh, the video I'm referring to is you guys were in your backyard just like going up and down the side of the yard doing like a oh, lookbook. Oh, a winter like, look garage, garage. probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. what was what was the inspiration for starting your channel? And uh, did you guys have any experience before you got started? I always loved media arts. Um, I actually took a media arts class in high school because my French teacher really liked my video project that I created. And he told me to, you know, take the class. And I was looking for an elective. So, and I went to a private school. They didn't really offer too many electives. Um, So I ended up taking the course and I just loved creating videos. And I even remember before I would create videos um, for my family, just like little tiny videos on like Movie Maker. But in general, I just really, really enjoyed media arts. Mm. And then on Richie's side. Yeah, so I... something that was kind of just starting back then um and so i kind of got into it tumblr was a big thing it was my biggest inspiration and so i actually got nominated as like best (laughs) dress for my yearbook and i was like whoa okay thanks guys i wish i could just pull up a collection of richie's outfits in the back in the day because she didn't care what people said i really didn't she would wear the wild like leopard print leggings with like an aztec top and a toque (laughs) with these big hoop earrings did you like like missy elliott's fashion sense like how uh, she would just use crazy stuff i would i would yeah. yeah i think before leopard was even in like i feel like i was wearing it already just yeah. because i don't know i just wanted to be different yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. um so we kind of meshed like yeah. our two passions together and yeah. we created to the nines that's cool now did yeah. you guys have any experience though like doing photography or video before you started your YouTube channel? You took classes in high school. I took, yeah, my media arts class, but honestly, I'm, well, in the beginning, especially, I was definitely more self-taught. I just really enjoyed um, the camera. I didn't know how to use it, but I just took the photo on, like, automatic, and then I would edit. It's funny, because, like, I took Richie's, like, it's a it's an event that like Filipinos have if a girl turns 18 it's called a debut yeah. Yeah. so we I took the photos in her kitchen with like I would use like wrapping, wrapping paper, paper yeah. as like Wallpaper. the background I would shoot it um I would, we would like put like lamps around right for lighting so, yeah. I would shoot it um on my camera and then I would edit it on my phone and I was just trying to be as resourceful as I could mm-hmm. with the limited amount of resources but I think that that's like also a tip is to be resourceful yeah, yeah. and to really just train your eye into right. creating something yeah. um, without all the equipment. Yeah, because if sure. you can learn with like a simple little Nikon, then you can learn with like a Sony a7X. Totally. You know, you can create even more photos. So I think yeah. it doesn't, I honestly don't think the equipment, well, obviously we're not shooting commercials, but for like social media, the equipment doesn't matter. Yeah. It's your eye and it's your creativity and being able to release that creativity and show what you want to create. For sure. Right. Yeah. I, I have a cool video that I want to share with the audience on that note. 
Um, but you know, this, this phone is powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a dope camera. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini computer. It's crazy what it can do, but it's like a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could probably get a free phone. That's got a legit HD camera that can do all of this. And you know, anybody can get the uh, apps, Right. but you guys made a video. I don't know when it was where you bought a camera that was less than five bucks, right? Oh yeah. So yes. if you guys think this is crazy, it is not crazy. It's not. Let's play this video and see what we're talking about and these by the way these cameras uh take photos and are eventually going to create content for your instagram yes, channel and so totally. we're going to be diving into that play that video right now anyways these are the film cameras that i have hoarded up <laughs> i actually got super excited because i totally forgot that i thrifted some minoltas i have two they're a japanese you know film camera brand and they were both $3.99, which is pretty darn cool. And then I have a Polaroid one, Canon, Vivitar. This has film in it still that I have not developed yet. But yeah, we're gonna go to London Drugs. Show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. Jen, Yumi, Drew again. Yeah, oh, and Wendy in a Polaroid. Same thing, same kind of thing. Yeah. Stick of magnet tape. This is just to give you guys some inspiration on how to display film if you don't want to put um wow. that's crazy that yeah. was a 399 dollar yeah. and two of them uh -huh. and that is nuts because um you know i totally forgot about film cameras mm -hmm. i know yeah. that they're coming back and yeah. people are kind of nostalgic oh, and it's got totally. a, like a certain feel to yeah. it but uh what i love about that is you literally just crushed everybody's excuse like i can't afford a camera right that is so right. true right? yeah I think film is so, so fun. It's funny because like, I guess Instagram kinda was like trying to implement film or not implement film, but like trying to mimic the film look with like all the yeah. filters and different apps were trying to do that. So I guess, um, I don't remember when we started shooting film, but it was more so fun to take the photos and have that period of waiting time yeah. because nowadays in this digital age, like everything is so instant. instant you take yeah. a photo, you can take 10,000 photos if you wanted to. Right. But with film, there's like this waiting process. And the thing with that is that you obviously have to pay per roll. Like it's probably yeah. 24 yeah. to like 32 pictures per roll. So you really have to take the time to really frame and position each photo because yeah. you really only get one shot at the yeah. photo unless you want to spend X amount of money Money, like developing it so it really if I'd say if, for people that want to start photography is to start using film because yeah, yeah totally yeah it will really like you train your challenge you yeah. yeah so Richie I want to ask you though obviously it's a film camera so you have to develop these yes. pictures how do you get it from that to your phone to Instagram um well very easy okay all you have to do is go to London Drugs yeah. or you're like or Costco, anywhere, Costco, Costco oh, yeah, anywhere yeah. that develops yeah. photos, and then you can actually get it sent to you through email. Oh, sweet. digital um, yeah. pictures, or what we do is we scan them. Yeah, and sometimes I like to cut it out mm -hmm. and like create like yeah. um, vectored pictures, yeah. I guess. Yeah, um, and just add them onto videos yeah. even. Yeah. Now, obviously not as convenient as just taking on your phone and having them available, but what you're doing is you're almost skipping the whole e editing process in yeah. terms of like getting that feel, right? Yeah. Um, and also it's a camera, like yeah. you have a camera. So the, the cool story I want to share with you mm -hmm. is the way I learned how to do photography and frame and the importance of lighting. And I didn't even know about white balance or anything because um, I was uh, so poor, I couldn't afford like a proper camera. Mm -hmm. Even though my dad had this nice Olympus, right? Mm -hmm. Like for me, like mm -hmm. he wasn't gonna let me bring that to school. So for about five years of my life, I only used disposable cameras, oh, never that. thinking anything of it. I was just like, that's all I can get yeah. my hands on, right? So um, in high school, uh, I had a wall in my bedroom completely covered in all of my disposable camera oh, film photos. Mm -hmm. So then when I saw that video of you guys sharing like all yours, mm -hmm. I didn't realize you're posting yeah. film photos oh, on your Instagram. I was yeah. like, oh, that's so crazy. And that's how I got my education, mm -hmm. right? On photography and awesome. framing. And I'd say, uh, I, I agree with you. One of the important things about film is it's one shot and that's it, right? Yeah. You can't take a thousand. So you really have to think through it. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to think about the lighting and especially the, the worse the camera, the better for education, right? Yeah, like, yeah I totally agree. I, yeah. I did have a flash, but you had oh, to like charge it up. Like you had to press the <laughs> button and let it charge up, right? But uh, you really had to think like, do 
I have enough light in right. this room, right? Mm, yeah. Or obviously outside is much better. It's funny when you look at the difference between outdoor photos and indoor photos with a disposable camera. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, some of you youngins probably don't even know, there's these things called disposable cameras. You buy it once and you give it back and they process the pictures or whatever, yeah. right? But that's how I got my start. Mm -hmm. So we're talking... Uh, and this is funny because you can easily take a thousand photos in a day now with yeah. a digital device totally. or a DSLR. But I probably took thousands of photos with tons of rolls of film mm -hmm. or these wow. disposable cameras. But I did. I, I learned about framing as well. Yeah. So w if you don't know what framing is, that's where you look at the picture, not just the object or the focus point, but like what else is in the background. Yeah. Right. So on that note, right? Like, so I have this, uh, uh, this, uh, similar interest interest and passion for photography, I haven't revisited it because I'm just so used to my phone. Yeah. Let's talk about that because mm -hmm. there's so many basics that people don't think about. And what I like is you guys can even take a, a really bad photography spot and make it look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a photo on your thing go, oh, that's a bad picture. Or like, <laughs> you know, that I wouldn't take pictures there. Yeah. I mean, they all look like they were studio, like a, a setup <laughs> or like uh, uh, done. And then when you see the video, the behind the scenes, yeah. you're in like an alleyway yeah. where like there's this harsh light. And, and a homeless right? man in the corner. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you want to share with the audience or your audience about that and why, like, why it's important to have these basics down? I think it's important because, well, it'll just be easier for you right. in the long run. Like being able to train your eye and say, oh, that little piece of trash is in the way it's going to be distracting or it's going to take too long for me to Photoshop it out. Just might as well remove it in the beginning so you don't have to worry about it after, yeah. during post-process. So I think like learning the basics such as lighting is yeah. really important yeah. because you can't really fix a bad lighting situation yeah. unless you're exactly. really proficient in Photoshop. So I'd say for beginners especially is to definitely utilize the natural light. Yeah. Golden hour is my favorite hour because it just makes your skin look nice, especially when I have had bad like acne breakouts. I would always like shoot in golden hour and it would just make my skin look yeah. all glowy and nice and my, highlight my highlighter would be popping. So. Yeah. What's yeah. golden hour for so people that don't like, know? It's like right before sunset. Yeah. It's like that specific, obviously the sun sets a little bit earlier nowadays because of the winter, but in the summer, golden hour lasts a little bit longer. And yeah. it's just like that perfect like yellow. Yeah. Yeah. It's hour. really cool too because you can utilize your flash to make uh, DSLR photos yeah. into f like to look, look like film, film photos. Yeah. Okay. So that's our trick. We don't always use film. Like we can sure. use our flash to make it look like a film photo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You literally just pop the flash pop the out. Flash out. <laughs> and like, even if it's pitch black, yeah, 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 you can literally pop the flash out and just shoot anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You're yeah. saying like a, 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 like a film camera, make it look like a DSLR, you're saying? No, like a the DSLR. Other way around. Oh, got it. Like it. Yeah. Film got it. Photo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Say so. we didn't bring our film camera or yeah. we forgot yeah. the roll. Sometimes, yeah, we mimic the film look because yeah. a lot of film photos are yeah. taken yeah. with flash, especially the, the disposable yeah. kind. And if it's really dark, like Richie and I would go like to the track like a track a random track yeah. field and then we would like sit on the track with like the numbers and i'd be shooting from above just yeah. like flash photos of yeah. richie and then when we edit it on our phone it just ends up looking like kind of filmy and it has yeah. that film kind of vibe because yeah. of the flash were you guys getting into film photography before it became popular and how long has it kind of been trendy lately Oh, it's been really, really trendy, especially in LA. I yeah. feel like a lot of LA influencers also have a secondary Instagram For how page. long? For how long, though? I would say in the last five years. Two years. Really? Well, disposable cameras okay. because LA has a lot of parties and sometimes like people love to take like right. disposable film uh, cameras and then just like shoot around and then like you get a bring your big camera. Yeah, I yeah. think um, David Dobrik especially just amplified it even more and pushed the whole disposable camera, um, you know, industry. But <laughs> Fuji film. So Richie, <laughs> when when was everybody starting to go like, oh wow, we should take photos on film. Right? When did that become popular? And were you guys doing it before that? That's my big question. Uh, I don't know if we were doing it before that. You were. Was I? 100%. The, Richie, I feel like, <laughs> did it way back. Like, maybe even... Was it even before I don't even our channel? I started. I feel like you started a really long time ago. And then I caught on. 
You, but you wouldn't shoot um, often, right? Because I don't. Know the reason I'm asking is yeah. because, um, well, we're going to get to the point. Uh, obviously, when things trend, they're trending for a reason. Like yeah. people want Start to do it, it because they want the same thing that those people that started the trend are getting. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really stands out about um, about film to me, I mean, it's been many, many years. What was the year when you started? I think like five years ago. Okay, so five yeah, years ago, right? More. Everybody was taking photos on their phone or a yeah. DSLR. And then you come in and you're uh, taking uh, photos on a film camera. Yeah going to London Drugs or yeah. uh, Costco and uh, developing them. And then there was a certain look. Yeah. Would that be correct? Like yeah. there was a certain oh, totally. look about it. Yeah. And that's why film photos yeah. became trendy. People like, this is different. Can yeah. you talk about that? Like why, why did you start doing film photos in the first place? I don't know. I think it's just so like fulfilling yeah. to take something because like what Kathy said, like everything now is so instant yeah. that it becomes so easy to like yeah. take a photo. But when you actually take a photo with a film camera, yeah. it's funny because I catch myself looking at like yeah. the, the screen, but yeah. there's no screen yeah. and I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> right. Yeah. I have to wait yeah, till yeah, I yeah. finish the role. And so it's so much more fulfilling, fulfilling to like bring uh that film to yeah. like let's say london drugs yeah. and get it developed mm -hmm. and like see just what you've taken because mm -hmm. i mean like i would take photos like over like months yeah and then i would forget what's actually on there yeah 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 and so when i actually see it it brings me back to that day where totally. i'm like oh shoot i actually yeah. did this it's like like it's really nostalgic. complete nostalgia yeah. for sure yeah and that by the way that's such an artsy answer like, <laughs> <laughs> such a like artist so thing like to say and tangible. no this is why i'm so glad i didn't know it was you i thought like you guys together like decided to do this richie was the one who showed me how to use a film which battery to buy yeah, and yeah, how yeah. to insert the film yeah. roll so she was the one who showed me but yeah. i remember when i was maybe six my mom would like oh, go totally. to the superstore yeah. yeah. and she would i'd be like what is this little thing like and i would use the little canister mm. as like little props for my dolls <laughs> So I didn't know what it was until now. Yeah. yeah. No. So the reason I'm on this and uh, I love your story is because, and this is why I was making fun of you. It was like for a reason about being artsy or whatever. <laughs> Typically like true artists start trends, right? Mm. Like that's like the artists are the ones willing to do it when it's like this, that, this is why it doesn't surprise me that you were the one in school wearing all the crazy stuff. Like you didn't care yeah. what other people thought. Mm -hmm. And then you did this with photography. You just like had a feeling about it and you yeah. just did it, but yeah. it wasn't necessarily to get more likes mm -hmm. or get more followers. You just thought like, I, I feel like this is the right thing. Yeah. And I think artists, ultimately do things that are different and because of it your photos stood apart and right. I think just what happened was people were just literally all the photos are looking the same everyone's taking photos on their iPhone yeah. now or there's like tons of apps that make your for sure. photos look filmy but but in the beginning you did that just because of a feeling and everybody jumps on the bandwagon because they want that they it's want trending. what's yeah. different and so the first tip for the audience is if you want to crush it on youtube or instagram or anything do something different right. than everybody else and yeah. that's what you did with the yeah. film photos and obviously it wasn't just you right mm -hmm. like you weren't oh, like totally, this person totally. like Richie i'm gonna change the film. world <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you and so many other creators i'm sure there was a lot of people that were thinking i'm gonna do this and this is why it brought me back and so the years when i was taking photos was like 98 99 wow. 2000 right <laughs> i'm thinking we were four <laughs> it's funny because back then i didn't think anything of it no. But yeah. I remember every time people came into my room and saw all my photos, um, there was something different about all the photos because yeah. as time went on, not only was I taking photos with this disposable film camera, which none of my friends were really doing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. They actually had digital cameras, right? And uh, that was when you would upload to your computer and like it would just be a square, yeah. right? But people would like look at the photos and there was something different. Like they, yeah. they're like, these are so cool. And it was on a disposable yeah. and the hole was covered. But, but what happened over the uh, course of so many years, I took that kind of different way of taking photography, which is like I was desperate for light. So yeah. I always had to wait oh, for yeah. the right moment, golden hour. And I was framing things correctly. Again, when you have a digital camera, you don't even care about framing because mm -hmm. you can go to yeah, computer totally. and edit yeah. all that out. Does that all make sense? Yeah. How yeah, like, literally, totally. you just did something different and so many other uh, probably creatives. And now the the whole world wants to do it yeah. and now they've got apps for this yeah, totally. right mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Is that Lightly. crazy? Like how like just being different is enough? Yeah. yeah. I love Ooh, that. Being different That's is enough. That's a great point. You don't need to edit. So like, you know, like now it's funny because ironically we're going to switch to like, what's your favorite app, right? That mimics <laughs> that, right? Like, do you guys have any apps Richie that you guys... Does. Yeah. I do. So, okay, you can talk oh, about it. But oh, I was just going to say, because like I always <laughs> like steal, her. she has a specific filter and I, I always do. steal it. So she uses a filter for basically your entire feed. You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. So I... Usually when you think about like editing, you use like different apps to, yeah. you know, get a certain look. But for me, like I just have no time for that. Like yeah. I just want one app that gives me mm -hmm. like the right filter. And so what I app? finally found it. It's called R&I Films. Okay. Um, so it's literally like um, filters that give you like that film look. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my feed is really warm. So I have this specific filter. Let's go um, to, uh, let's go to our Instagram uh, feed yeah. and pull it up on the uh, video. So R&I Films. And yes. so we're going to go to your Instagram uh, feed here in a second and show people uh, what it is. Um, but uh, you know, t uh, explain to us what R&I does. That so R&I has a bunch, like I think five categories of like film-esque like, okay. vibes. Um, you could add grain to it. You can adjust the brightness. And it's very simple for someone like me who's not very tech savvy, okay. which is surprising, right? Because yeah. I do social media. Yeah. But um, I just want like one specific look totally. with one app. Um, and I use one fil one or two filters. Okay. Um, is it already built in, the filters? Yes. Okay. And then you can adjust the strength of it um, to how much you want it to be. And then I always add grain because I like that yeah. film. Yeah. So I uh, think it's, oh, sorry. let's look at your, your Instagram account right now. It's going to be up there. Um, so which one of these are like, uh, l l explain some of these photos, by the way, right? How do I explain my photos? I don't know. Like that one <laughs> with the text over your face, you have a hoodie. Uh, oh, scroll yeah. up a little bit there. No, the uh, other way. Go. There you go. Was that using the RNI? Uh, pretty much everything's R and I. Oh, I have crazy. to pass it through on R and I. Except like if I were to post film photos, I don't okay. normally have to yeah. filter them oh, anymore. Oh, interesting. Just so because, let's let's yeah. go back to the window. Which one is a film photo? Okay, if you go scroll down, maybe a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Any of those? I can't really see because the screen is. Oh yeah, yeah. It. We'll just keep scrolling until you yeah. see one. Actually, as of late, yeah, nothing. There's nothing much. Like, okay, like explain that one. You guys are on the couch, right? Uh, oh, I have yeah. another interesting question after this. Uh, go ahead and click on that one. You guys on the couch, right? Yes. What kind of camera is that? It's our DSLR, it's our, our Panasonic, the camera that we use for everything. But it looks like film, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we use flash on that. That's this. probably why you thought Richie had a lot of film. I exactly. had a lot of film like da way down, but yeah. That's cool. You can yes. bring it back to us. Okay, so no, that's a, a great point because it's interesting. I just watched that video and assumed like most of them were film. Yeah. And even that picture to yeah. me looks like a film right? yeah. shot, yeah. right? So uh, yeah, anyway, so um, diving back into R&I, tell us about that a little bit more. And we'll, we'll put the links down um, below to these apps, by the way. Yeah. So there's different ones like um, Fujifilm, okay. uh, Vintage, yeah. Negative. Negative is the one I use yeah. a lot, this specific category. And then I scroll to uh, Kodak Gold cool. 200 mm -hmm. V version Are you sure 3. you want to talk about your filters? Because everyone's going to start using Honestly, them. Honestly, <laughs> use it. This is the film roll that we literally yeah. buy in Walmart. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's I think crazy. it's three for $15. Yes. So Kodak Gold 200 yeah. is what Richie uses as like her filter. And then sometimes I'll hop on that filter too and I steal it because it just makes the photo look really the nice. The pinks are really good in this yeah. one. Yeah. But if you guys didn't know for like a film, they actually have different ISO. Yeah. So there's like 1600 yeah. ISO on different films. So like if you were in a brighter setting, it, yeah. would, it wouldn't be ideal to use that. 1600, yeah. Yeah. So we usually gravitate towards 200 mm -hmm. or 400 400 yeah. yeah so cassie what's your favorite app to okay use? so here's oh, the thing a lot. <laughs> it really depends on my mood okay before i would really want to curate my instagram feed to make it look cohesive use the same thing but nowadays i care less about that okay. and more about trying to do something relatively different to make my feed stand out. Let's uh, pull up her uh, Instagram account. It, in fact, while you're talking, we're going to uh, have your Instagram up there. Sweet. Okay. So I 
the thing is, it's really funny because Richie and I are really different. So Richie is very resourceful and she just uses her phone to edit usually. Um, She actually also does graphic design on Keynote, (laughs) oddly enough. Um, So she's really good with that. But for me, I like to take it a little bit of a step further and edit things on Photoshop and Lightroom. So there was actually a photo that I recently edited from my trip in Korea where I look like I'm walking into the picture. You can scroll down a little bit more. Okay. Um, It's a white border photo. Keep Keep going. Keep going. Keep Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Um, I think it's right there. Um, Yeah, perfect. So this got a significant amount of likes because I don't think anyone has ever seen something like this before. And I just had this. I'm pretty sure it was 3 a.m. I was like had some sort of jet lag in Korea. Everyone was sleeping, but I was like under the covers with my laptop editing these four photos because I just had an idea of like capturing it in a different way, a little bit more like a whimsical yeah, kind of yeah, magazine-esque yeah, yeah. vibe. So I started Photoshopping my like body from the feet or from yeah. like the Shin. knees down and then like making it look like I'm walking into the photo. That is so cool. I actually didn't know that was your thing behind it. I thought it was just like a you just cool want, little edit. No, no, no. I was like, I wanted to look like I'm like, hey, I'm walking mm-hmm. into Korea. Okay. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that. So I tend to do this. Um, usually it happens when it's like really late at night and I yeah. get this random burst of creative energy. Um, so and that is one of the coolest ideas <laughs> mm-hmm. I've heard in a long time. Like literally, like since you uh, mentioning you starting film. See, that's what I like. Uh, this is just about being different, yeah, right? So yeah. like the photo itself is a kind of a basic photo, yeah. right? Um, even though it's not really that basic. The fact that you're turned away is already cool and your face is turned. See, I I know like those things like, (laughs) because everyone wants to do the selfie, right? right, Or they want to do the pose or whatever. But I I notice when someone's doing something that's not obviously different, but there is a difference. Mm -hmm, But what I like is that you're thinking about the picture almost as a um, a story, right? Yes. And that you go walking into it. And again, <laughs> whatever is different is going to stand out. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't even have to be rocket science or anything. Yeah. Now, how hard was it, though, to edit that? Uh, honestly, I've, I'm have i really, oddly enough, good at loopholing my way. Like I said, you don't need to follow like a step-by-step yeah. guideline. Yeah. You can like come up with different ways to get to that end result. So yeah. I just kind of, I can't even explain my process because yeah. I just like go through like different like loopholes in yeah. order to achieve what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, but obviously um, there's so many tutorials, um, like yeah. Photoshop tutorials. We are so blessed to be living in 2020 because there's so much of, of uh, so many resources. information yeah. available yeah. on like how to edit this, how to remove that. So it's really easy for me to just be like, oh, I don't know how to... Um, change the color of just the reds or something like let me just photoshop yeah. let me just like look at look through that on um youtube and like mm-hmm. figure yeah. out what like how to achieve what i want to achieve so it's really easy and yeah like going off of that there's actually another photo that i've edited let's, too let's in pull korea up, pull it up it should be in the same um same feed and what, what's the photo look like? So Richie and I love to do collages. And my boyfriend actually is really into film photos as well and okay. photography. Yeah. So oftentimes he'll just send me like a random um, photo yeah. for inspo. I yeah. never like to copy things exactly. Uh-huh. Um, so it's right there. It's a, that one um, that you're clicking on right now. It, yeah. So he sent me this one thing where it looked like a collage, but I think it was hand cut. Okay. So I'm like, maybe I can make something in Photoshop that kind of resembles that collage okay. kind yeah. of look. Yeah. And because I wanted to do an outfit of the day of this new outfit that I was loving, yeah. Yeah. but in a different way. Yeah. So I took his idea and kind of... Also genius. Well, it wasn't his idea. He found it on Instagram. Okay. But <laughs> um, it was a completely different vibe. Yeah, and I just yeah. kind of made it my own. And as you can see, it continues yeah. from one... One photo to the other so it's like oh yeah yeah a longer photo but just split in the middle so that it's seamless so mm-hmm. i just like to be extra sometimes and take my time on photoshop and create something that's in my head just for the satisfaction of it like i didn't know it would react like people would react to it in like such a positive way but those two photos that i took extra time yeah. on people were like this is cool i'm gonna like this and i think both of those have 
like 20k likes oh yeah and like that that one of you in korea is 28,000 likes yeah, yeah and my average is not 20k yeah. it's maybe less than 10 no, well so. thank you no that, that's awesome i uh already got some ideas like cooking shots that i could do that <laughs> just like co complete different perspective because i've been losing the passion so i started doing food mm -hmm. photos with a dslr on Instagram in 2012 and 13, before even people were thinking about mm -hmm. taking your DSLR shots and putting on Instagram. Yeah. It was all from your photo. It was like just quick, it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously there's people doing dope photography, but in my world that was, so I remember those, and it's not about likes, but of course likes kind of tell you how uh, people are feeling or how inspired right. they are. And I just remember those getting a lot more. And then I stopped doing it once everybody else started doing that mm -hmm. stuff, right? And now there's like whole accounts just around Food Channel. Here's mm -hmm. So this is my mm -hmm. latest uh, food <laughs> photo. I just I did this that. on my iPhone. Thank you for liking it, whoever yes. that was. But <laughs> that's just like uh, some uh, fettuccine Alfredo. But if you go to my account lately, it's just me in the family. It's uh, okay. to me like it. There isn't any strategy or uh -huh. anything. Actually, you know what? Since we're on this topic, and by the way, uh, let's go back to me real quick. We're going to be next talking about YouTube tips, right? About the videos itself. Mm -hmm. I just want to start here because, again, not just from taking the photos, but the tips on creating content. Um, uh, all It's all the same principles, okay? But I want to talk about Instagram. I have one funny question for you guys. Ooh. It's serious for me. But let's go back to my Instagram. I want to tell you my my kind of strategy so obviously my my photos are very casual um so the see the black and white again this ain't rocket science i literally learned this from beyonce <laughs> but how all three of those photos are all black and white because mm -hmm. you know how beyonce will do that she posts three photos yeah. at a time or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. i so i'm not saying i came up with that but i'm just saying like these three photos tended to do better like because there was like a vibe to it like the black oh, and white okay. so it's just different yeah. for me and my audience let's go down let me it's see cool. if, it's kind of like a break in between the other photos obviously got some sponsored posts thank you disney for sponsoring <laughs> us uh no i'm trying to think of where, w what photo okay cool no let's talk about the uh let's talk about me in halloween okay so if you go to that that got a lot of likes for I me. Love that. And so if you think about this photo, what's interesting, if I've taken lots of photos with the um, with the girls. What made this unique? I don't know if it's two photos or not. Scroll over. It is, okay? So Cute. this is also nostalgic for people uh -huh. that grew up with it. And so my audience, a uh, similar age, and they saw this, and then you go back. I mean, not only is it cute, but they're wearing the exact same yeah. thing. So the strategy, it wasn't even a strategy. Like, I wasn't thinking, oh, this is going to get lots of likes. The thought was, okay, let's replicate this nostalgic kind of uh, scene yeah. or picture or this feeling of this science scientist and whatever and then it did really well in fact it kind of went semi-viral in south america and mexico for some reason wow. right uh, anyways i love that photo so much i love the powerpuff girls like that was my favorite cartoon so when i saw that i'm like that is so cute you have three daughters like it's perfect yeah <laughs> yeah but it's interesting like just taking a little bit of extra time to think through the idea and come up with a different angle mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. um will uh, pay dividends but my serious question for you guys Ooh. very Ooh, serious. serious or funny and uh let's uh let's pull up one of their instagram accounts okay oh so gosh. you guys can see what oh, my question God. is my question is this let's pull up their instagram here how do you get the face <laughs> the look the let's go to one where it's both of them right go down go down oh boy go down go down is there one of the both of them together they have like a serious look oh, like wow. on richie's if you go to richie's there was definitely one go oh, to richie's gosh. account there you go. Definitely try to smile a bit more, but <laughs> go down, go down. Wanna, um, the the top one. Oh, how boy. do you get that look? Don't and smile. make it look good. Okay, are you guys able to do that on command? Let's yeah, go back to you guys. Yeah, we can do that on command. So right now, yeah, yeah, do it. I want to see. <laughs> I'm laughing okay, now. Ready? We need to wait. We need to use a phone. Okay, they're gonna take a picture. You guys are gonna see it's the just magic. Finding your optimal. Okay, angle. yeah, yeah. Finding your, your animal. See, okay, let's go Literally. back to me now. If I did that, okay. I think it's chin. If I look like that, I do I just look creepy. Just chin, <laughs> chin up. That's it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, I think the way that you're doing, you have a 
little smirk. That's why. Yeah. Anyway, no, I just thought that was interesting because uh, obviously that's a um, it's a very like fashion centric yeah. oh, kind of totally look. Is. Right? I think it really came from collaborating with different photographers, okay. especially like back in the day we would collaborate with our friends that um, worked for different, I guess, media outlets and like or would do photography for fun and yeah. just like walking around doing photo walks with them and just being comfortable yeah. with um someone else taking a photo of you and then yeah i don't know yeah. in turn learning how especially to especially with fashion and, yeah. you don't yeah. necessarily smile with like every outfit like because we would film like 10 outfits and yeah. to smile in every outfit i think would be a little creepy yeah, yeah. It's just, but yeah mimicking what I we guess see just, too yeah, yeah so like then what the would be, what would be your advice because the reason i ask that is an actual serious question people mm. don't know how to look in their photos right? right now what would be your advice generally for people and they don't have to look uh, like all serious or fashion like what would be your advice for people that feel nervous uh -huh. and they're not looking themselves uh -huh. mm. i guess it's to find the right angle like what side you like <laughs> taking photos of oh. um it's so funny i'm always no matter where we are i'm always sitting on the right of richie okay yeah. because in my eyes obviously some you're it's the subjective. person taking the photo is not going to see what you right. see mm -hmm. you're the one looking at yourself and seeing how you like to be looked at so i always like being looked at from the right side and richie always likes being looked at from the left side so when we're filming we're always shooting like on our specific on sides. our specific Got sides it. and if um someone like asks to take a photo uh with us we always like switch around if we're not on the right yeah. side i like that so that's a very practical yeah. piece of advice on you know find your best angle literally yeah. right mm -hmm. and just stick to it yeah. yeah. Versus me, I'm just always making it up every single time. <laughs> yeah. So Richie, what would be your advice? Maybe more of a mental thing, you know, because a lot yeah. of people, they're just nervous about oh, how totally. they look. True. What would be your advice for somebody that's just starting out, uh, whether they want to get into fashion photos yeah. or just take better selfies? Right. I think we all have different vibes. So like we've established what we are and we know like the vibe that we want to portray mm -hmm. and we're still in it being ourselves. Yeah. We're not being all like, you know, someone other than ourselves yeah yeah so i think i mean like the advice be yourself yeah. is like so cliche but it's so true because then it resonates to the people who are watching you yeah. like they they can see if you're being genuine and yeah. if you're being yourself um so like at the end of the day like you can try to be someone else yeah. but your personality will always shine through so mm -hmm. i think for us we just like figured out the yeah. the niche the vibe that we wanted yeah. to go for and we didn't perfect it, but we just are confident yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That's why you did. I was surprised when you guys actually did that. Like you got together and you, <laughs> just, started, we like, just like, you went right into the, the <laughs> mode, the selfie yeah. mode. We tried just for you, Benji. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, let's get into some YouTube stuff and then we're going to give some like practical tips. I know that you guys have been uh, rattling off a whole bunch of stuff, but we'll like bam, 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 hit them all up at once. But I guess uh, my question is this. Let's pull up their YouTube channel now and we're going to dive into your YouTube channel and show little clips of different mm -hmm. videos. Mm -hmm. There's gonna not gonna be audio, but obviously you guys have a YouTube channel called To the Nines, right? And by the way, it's up on there. Sorry, you guys can't really see it very well. Okay. Um, but uh, if you go to their videos, lots of lookbooks, uh, lots of uh, even vlogs, right? Like you guys started yeah, doing travel yeah. vlogs. Mm -hmm. I noticed that people uh, with you, Cassie, they love your hair videos. <laughs> so exactly. I'd say like another sub niche is beauty. Um, obviously like very, uh, you know, like fashionable stuff, but uh, let's go to a video, one of the lookbook videos. I know that in the beginning that tended to be one of your, and let's go on full screen there. Would you say your uh, fashion, your lookbook videos were some of your more popular ones oh, at yeah, the totally. beginning? That right? was yes. the look that, well, our first video was a lookbook. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So that's actually what propelled us. Is this a lookbook? This is a September favorite. Okay, um, okay, so Neutrally doesn't know anything about fashion or stuff. <laughs> Let's go find a lookbook. So a lookbook is where it's almost like a uh, fashion magazine, right? So is yeah. there one, which one should we pick? I think like... Re a really interesting, more artsy yeah. cinematography, yeah. Uh, cinematic cinematography yeah. lookbook would probably be the Puffer Jackets lookbook. Okay, let's go to the Puffer Jackets lookbook. Um, 
Uh, sorry, you guys. Okay, right here. You can look at oh, this yeah. too. Okay, cool. No, this is great. This, this is a great. this is a lookbook, right? So this is where you're showing off your clothing mm -hmm. rather than doing like a OOTD picture on. Well, that was cool. <laughs> Obviously, Chris, that's Chris loves this, vid love this video. <laughs> he told us in the car. He was like, "Wow, this video is cool." That's cool. And so, anyways, explain this video, like how you guys came up with this, or is this just so normal? You guys are just doing all kinds of shots. Well, the thing is, this was kind of filmed as like a segment for epidemic sounds okay yeah so we actually got flown to new york That's to cool. work with epidemic sounds yeah, on their that. music matters yes. series so they kind of wanted us to f they kind of wanted to film us in our element mm. aka filming a lookbook yeah so it just kind of worked hand in hand so yeah. we actually had a guy on a big red camera yeah a huge camera oh, filming crazy. the behind the scenes yeah. Yeah, yeah. while I was filming with my Panasonic while just trading off with Richie. Yeah. Actually, it's funny because usually we film each other, yeah. um, which which helps. Like some people have like videographers. Totally. Yeah. But I feel like Richie and I just work really well together and we just know what each other's angles, angles are. are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're able to shoot the right thing right off the bat rather than taking multiple takes. Yeah. It's really, mm -hmm. the process is really like, quick and easy for us sometimes we're even pressed for time yeah. yeah but we just came up with a system you know we've been working together for so long we've been friends for like almost 10 11 years uh, 12 yeah. years this year yeah. wow yeah so like it's an instinct right it's yeah an instinct yeah it's it's funny you mentioned that even sean and i we don't do as many these days but he was here a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. we were we went live and we we're talking to the influencer community here and it's interesting when you start working together enough, you do get in um, uh, like a feel for the other person. So we're able yeah. to tee each other up for the next topic or the exactly. next question. Or even if we want a specific answer, we know how to lead into right. that. And so for you guys, you know what the other person is doing when they're walking they they have this yeah, whatever yeah, walk totally. and you know like what angle you're like yeah. okay no i need to focus on the shoes right now because the way like she's walking or whatever so um that's interesting so let's talk about the lookbooks when you guys first started those lookbooks were you guys doing anything different than the fashion community back then on youtube or was that a norm by then so lookbooks were definitely a norm, but we found that the fashion industry on YouTube never really, style-wise at yeah. least, didn't resonate with us. Mm -hmm. Like back in the day, like we loved, well, we still do. We love minimalistic fashion. We love everyday casual wear. And I feel like the lookbooks that were being put out were a little bit more wild or a little more too out of our comfort zone. Um, Jen M was definitely a big like inspiration, inspiration mm -hmm. for us. We loved her videos, but we didn't necessarily resonate with her style back then so we decided you know what we just want to show what we love yeah and this was after richie's whole like cheetah print leopard phase whatever yeah <laughs> so it was a lot more simple a lot more clean and it's funny enough that we our actual video that we filmed our first ever video wasn't actually supposed to be a fashion video yeah it was a makeup video but is it still up on no, there no, no, oh, no. we it. never okay. uploaded it because yeah. we watched through with it through it and we we're like eh, yeah. let's start with fashion yeah. so i think that was like that little like instinct in and of itself just That's so good yeah like definitely brought us to where we were that yeah. little decision of we're actually going to do fashion and not what everyone else is doing yeah. at the time right. which was makeup yeah. yeah so yeah it really you know it helped us out yeah what do you think yeah what do you think <laughs> Wait, what was the question again no no i mean so i love what you just brought up by the way <clears throat> um how you guys started on this path to doing makeup and of course i can speak to that world because yeah. judy but mm -hmm. even before that michelle fawn and there was all these huge info do you know who michelle fawn is yes oh, okay love yeah. her. Met her. but but um oh I'm yeah we didn't we met her once yeah. i'm so glad you shared that experience because so many people that are starting youtube they think they want to do this because mm -hmm. they see that yeah when what they really want to do is something else but mm -hmm. because they don't have an example to look to or maybe they can't relate to yeah. the other mm -hmm. creators or yeah. the influencers doing it they like they don't know how it's being done so when you guys made that switch was it much more instinctual or did you really have to work hard to get the right vibe down and i know you guys did lookbooks in fact let's pull up the oldest lookbook oh, video on their the channel very first one wow. yeah yeah the very first lookbook video 20 minutes long mm -hmm. i don't see that's the thing i don't know if it's live or because of the copyright thing yeah. so maybe the let's just let's go to their channel and uh switch the uh, view oh, to gosh. the oldest videos right Dang. 
and then try to look for that okay. uh, right now. Is it there? No, it's not up oh, there. It's a phone but the first one. one would probably be the winter lookbook. Yeah, let's look at that winter lookbook real quick. Yeah. So it's interesting. So like how long after your guys, okay, uh, is this an ad? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's not ad. us. For what? <laughs> okay, cool. So how long after your makeup video did you guys do this video, would you say? Probably. Um, this is like this our fourth video in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And back then we weren't at all like consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so it was think... just, just more for fun, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Totally. yeah. Oh, That's 100%. How it started. Were, I don't think back then like we knew that it would become a business or yeah. it could yeah. even. So what do you want to say, Richie, about this video? Like when you guys uh, this started is my house. this? Yes. <laughs> so we just filmed literally in Cassie's backyard yeah. in front of her garage. Yeah. So we really used what we had yeah. right in front of yeah. us. And um, I and then we realized people started to do kind of like I don't want to say copy, but yeah. like after filming in front of a garage specifically, yeah. we've seen like a bunch of people f wanting to film in front of a garage. Okay. We're like, oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah. And so ever since then, I think we kind of wanted to explore kind of like Vancouver yeah, and yeah. showcase Vancouver, yeah. mm -hmm. Vancouver's alleys. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. The really cool spots that people don't normally go to and wouldn't usually <clears throat> film at. Um, so yeah, just having an eye for where we want to film yeah. and um, Man, yeah, but it started it. in front of a garage <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I don't, actually our rationale for the garage wasn't the fact that it, we wanted to shoot in front of a garage. Yeah. We just wanted a plain background. And then plain we enough. noticed on, like Richie was saying, we noticed on Instagram people started shooting in front of a garage. Like We're specifically. Like, oh, we just wanted a white background. Yeah. Like that's like all we wanted. Yeah. yeah. And then it just became a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason I asked about were you guys doing something different because, you know, obviously you guys are successful. You guys have grown your audience. You, you get, you know, more than most other people in terms of views. But, uh, you know, what was the key moment? Was it those lookbooks? What was it about the beginning mm -hmm. that set you guys apart? It sounds like even some of your ideas, right? Yeah. Like you, you had a different vibe. What was it? That's what I'm trying to get down yeah. to for it you was, guys. It was the first ever video. Yeah. I wish we could pull it up. Um, oh, okay. We obviously yeah, can yeah. because <laughs> of... Um, but it was the first ever video that yeah. we filmed. It was actually 20 minutes long. I did not think people would watch it, but I just remember it, being in my parents' bedroom and just like sitting on their bed or the couch and just editing for like maybe three hours, mm. trying to really perfect it. I wanted people to see that we're putting in effort. And I think that's what people caught on was the effort that we actually put in. It wasn't just like we stuck it on a tripod. Yeah. We made sure that there was motion. We made sure that they could see us clearly that we're adding personality. We're yeah. laughing. We're having fun, yeah. which we were. We weren't faking it. Um, and I think they just saw like the effort that we put into it and yeah. we would get comments after comments yeah. being like, we want more from yeah. that specific video. And I think that video itself gained probably 500,000 or more. Yeah. I like think. we were so yeah. surprised, like the algorithm just picked up yeah. our first video and then yeah. that kind of got us to, to uploading more. I think also, uh, we resonated with like high schoolers because I think that was like our main audience back then yeah. um, because that video was mainly a haul for thrifted items, okay, which was yeah. like so oh, cheap. Yeah, we, yeah. we bought a sweater for like three bucks. Yeah. And I think to a high schooler, it's like, oh, it's actually an option mm. to buy from Valley Village mm -hmm. or Goodwill. Like it's not like I feel like growing up, like thrifting wasn't a th like a cool thing yeah. to do. Yeah. And like I guess in high school I was like hey like I don't have that much money yeah. right I yeah. use my yeah. allowance $20 allowance to buy something that I want yeah um and it was also a time where I was trying to discover who I was like in the fashion world mm -hmm. or like my style in general yeah. yeah um and it took a while I guess like it took me like two different phases to kind of get to a place where I'm like confident in what I yeah what like what I wear no yeah. matter what it is yeah. um so yeah thrifting is definitely this the place to to go yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to discover your style for sure I actually just found our oldest video because I have access to yeah. it so the view count of it is actually 595,000 views crazy. and comments wise it is at um almost 400 so looking back through those comments back in the day i just got so inspired by yeah. what our, the feedback was like yeah. wow my no. hard work actually paid off <laughs> so i know what uh, a lot of the audience is saying it's like i would like five hundred thousand views on my first <laughs> I upload know. but there's a few things that i think is really important to uh clarify number one 
could you imagine if you didn't do fashion, you just continue makeup, makeup. you probably wouldn't like it would have got lost to the competition, yeah. right? Oh, because totally. you you did something that you guys cared about. You were mm -hmm. obviously oriented. Were you kind of into fashion as well yeah, at the I time, was. right? I actually in my high school, well, I went to a private school, yeah. so I had to wear a uniform. Yeah. So in the beginning of our YouTube career, I guess you could say, I was actually piggybacking off of Richie's style yeah, yeah. because I didn't really know what to wear because okay. I was like so used to wearing uniform yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so that's cool so like, number one you just did what you were passionate about but also you did something a little bit different than other people right mm -hmm. yeah because i'm sure there's other people doing a lot of makeup tutorials thinking that's what you need to do um secondly you were aligning with your audience because you guys were in you guys were in high school at the time mm -hmm. right uh, like oh, right after right after school. and yeah. because you're thrifting because a lot of high schoolers don't typically have money yeah you made a uh, thrift store clothes look good yeah was that also around the time that a uh, thrift store song came out with macklemore what? Yeah, maybe around that time i guess <laughs> i think I it was not so much i think it was like fine like with the thrift store song yeah. it's just like finding like weird pieces but yeah. nowadays it's really a great tool to like discover your style because yeah everyone like Marie Kondo you know what I mean like everyone wants to clear their closets yeah. out so might as well look through the thrift store and like tr discover your style For on sure. a budget and yeah. also st sustainably and yeah. then so the third piece and uh, thank you Cassie for sharing is uh you said it it took a lot of work oh, like yeah. there's no shortcut there no so it'd be different if literally all you did was shoot a video for three minutes no edits and but and then it got half a million then you really wouldn't want know what to do but yeah. you kind of knew what to do because you worked towards it right yeah. like there was almost a structure to it mm -hmm. so then after that it was just duplicating that mm -hmm. and the reason i bring this all up is because you know, some people might be like, well, uh, great for them. Like they got lucky, but you didn't really get lucky. You did some key things that maybe right. you weren't even thinking about at the time. Like even the, the going from makeup to fashion was almost uh, not intentional. It was instinctual, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the working hard, everybody should definitely work hard. But yeah. if you work hard on the wrong things, it doesn't yeah. even matter. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what was the third one? It was actually the original second one. So it was... Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no. You were aligning with the audience. Yeah. So, okay. right. The audience, like you hit uh, like a, a something like a feeling in the audience. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I don't have a lot of money, but I want to look right. good. Yeah. So you're like, hey, you can go to the thrift store mm -hmm. and actually make it look like high end fashion. I, when I look at your videos, especially when you do the thrift store ones. It, it's like Rihanna's newest like clothing <laughs> line to me. I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. I, I would have never thought that you paid five, 10, $20 yeah. for those pieces. Yeah. So mm -hmm. any thoughts when I say that? Because again, that's not uh, rocket science or crazy hacks. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of like basic things, but that's still what makes you guys successful even to this day. Would you s agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think being just mindful of what you are consuming is very important like I cannot deal like I cannot deal with like so many clothes at once yeah. I have to donate it or I give it to my younger cousin and I think it's just making sure that the things that you have in your possession are something that you'll actually use and something that you'll that you like yeah. rather than it being just like there for yeah. the sake of it being there yeah um Richie and I love being able to express our style in a very um what's it called affordable way right. yeah. we don't really never actually we barely shop, shop designer ever yeah. um the only time we'll ever feature any designer products is if it's a consignment item like richie will um, feature her mom's like louis vuitton mm -hmm. louis vuitton bag that she doesn't use yeah. but we will rarely like um, hunt for that kind of item yeah. Yeah. unless it's something that we really want to yeah. splurge on or treat ourselves uh, with. Yeah. So it's less of like the accumulation of things, right. yeah. but the quality of things and things that yeah. you actually enjoy. Yeah, totally. So um, we're going to wrap it up here in terms of, you know, talking about editing and shooting. But um, everyone, we're going to be taking some questions. We've got those collected in the doc right now. Uh, so stay tuned. Hit like if you guys like what you're hearing, if you're getting any value out of this. But I guess the, uh, and we'll move into the actual tips, right? Mm -hmm. And sure. by the way, you can totally repeat things you've already said. I think that's the whole point of the conversation. Like dive a little bit deeper into your history, um, into a little bit more context on your strategy and then uh, actually like uh, collect them. 
But, uh, you know, ultimately, we're here for YouTube, YouTube videos, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and people are growing their Instagram. But what what would be the things that have made you guys successful? Like, so in the beginning, I, I mentioned those three things. It almost was an accident, even though, of course, you guys worked hard and deserve it. But what are the things like in, in the next couple of years after that that helped you guys grow the most when it comes to uh, your fashion channel? Definitely consistency. Oh, I yeah. think like really even if we don't gain traction in one video it doesn't mean we're gonna stop you know like we know that this is something that we love to do and i think consistency was the biggest thing that kept the momentum going Um, when we first started we would post one video every three months and so when we saw like people really resonating with what we put out there i think um they became more loyal with us knowing that we were loyal with them you know being out there every week you know and Mm -hmm. it does take a lot of work like we would film at cassie's house uh, like till 2 3 a.m and that's just how we are and then when we got older we were just like okay my body can't take this yeah so we would have to set schedules and you know like adjust to each other's kind of like needs and um yeah yeah i think yeah consistency is definitely key i know we're not perfect at it but Mm -hmm. we do try Yeah. yeah and what was the question again my question for you then on that note is a lot of people when they're starting YouTube, yeah. oh, um, what helped the, us? Well, right. well, yeah, what helped you? But on the consistency note, is their challenge is they don't know mm-hmm. how to stay consistent. What would be your advice, Cassie, to other people on not only how they can stay consistent, but how did you guys stay consistent? Like, what did you have to do, or what was your mindset to be able to do it? Because of course, sometimes you hit some hard times, mm-hmm, or you're mm-hmm. busy. Um, and I know that consistency is key. In fact, that's one of the um, the C's in the seven C's of success of YouTube Secrets. Mm-hmm. How did you guys stay consistent all these years? I think we really just at times we just had to make it work, especially. Um, Maybe three years into our YouTube career, we started getting paid for the videos that we would make. And obviously you can't not be consistent when you're getting paid. You need to submit a video by a certain time and post at a certain time. So that honestly, just to be transparent, that actually helped with our consistency aspect, knowing that, oh, this is actually a business and we're actually getting paid to do what we love. We have to be consistent. We need to perform. Yeah. For sure. And so uh, on that note, um, uh, following that up, or do you have any other general tips for people when it comes to what made you guys successful the few years after you got started? Um, from an editing perspective, I honestly used to be really scared of plugins or I was just hesitant to use plugins because I thought I was cheating. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just taking the easy way around easy uh, route and like downloading someone else's like filter but honestly the whole work smarter not harder thing is so important because there's so many different plugins free also um they're not all like you know you don't have to pay for all of them there are some free plugins that that are available and just expanding your editing yeah. tools yeah. Um, really will help. And it's really fun too, like experimenting with like a new filter or a new like film border. I think it's like really cool. And there are so many, so many tutorials online that you can just watch and binge and just gather information from. For sure. Yeah. And uh, to explain a plugin, because I'm not that familiar, what editing software do you use? So I use, I do all of the editing. Yeah. Richie actually does graphic design. Okay. And I'll let her talk about that later. Um, so I do all of the editing. Okay. Like I said, I really love media and media arts. So I use Final Cut Pro and I've been using that for maybe five years. Yeah. And I just love how user-friendly it, it, it is especially if you have a Mac. Well, you can only use it if you have a Mac. Um, and just how like easy it is to use and how easy the plugins are to plug in, yeah. I guess you could say. <laughs> so a plug-in, explain to somebody that's never heard what that is, what that actually is yeah. and how that's helpful. I mean, obviously it helps you do more and make it look better. Yeah, so a plugin can be anywhere between like an effect uh, yeah. A filter, a filter, a font, something that's not already built into Final Cut Pro. So it's um, outside external external resources that you can put into Final Cut Pro to, and you can customize it to whatever plugin you want. So the plugins that uh, I started 
with in the yeah. beginning was transitional plugins. Mm. So basically, I can add a transition. Um, for example, Richie and I are being shot like above from a drone. I got this zoom in plugin, which yeah. would like zoom us in to um, a different shot of us closer. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of added uh, a little bit more quality yeah. and like dynamic within the video yeah. and it made it more interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I think plugins definitely help make yeah. your video more interesting, but I don't, I don't try to like fill my video with plugins. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Obviously like the, basically a yeah. plugin is just something to help cut down some of the work yeah, to make yeah, yeah. your videos oh, yeah. look better, yes, right? You can yes. download these plugins again, just Google this and you can, uh, find everything. But, um, yeah, w if you need water, we got water. By the <laughs> way, my quick question, are you guys hungry? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you guys eat anything we today? Did, we did. No, we did. Okay, we good, did. good. I had a chia seed pudding. It was delicious. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what'd you eat? I had some fruits and a cinnamon French toast. Okay, cool. And mm -hmm. bacon. Okay, good. Oh, and avocado on toast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good. But I will cook you guys lunch yeah, after yeah, this. We're, we're going to make you don. But yeah, plugins are really powerful because editing takes a lot of work. Uh -huh. And it, you can make your own graphics and stuff, but you have to use another software yeah. to bring it in. So plugins makes it really convenient just yeah. to be able to download. Um, I guess... W what would be your last tips for the audience when it comes to, uh, by the way, it doesn't have to be just video or video mm -hmm. editing, um, generally speaking on YouTube or what were like some stories or, uh, moments that were key for you guys and your YouTube success? I think the biggest thing is making friends, um, collaborating, um, making for us when we started, uh, there wasn't a lot of people in Vancouver or there wasn't any in Vancouver mm -hmm. that did fashion videos. I think it was mostly blogging. Yeah. Um, and so we made it a thing to make friends through the internet and actually meet up with them. Yeah. So we went to LA. That's when we learned a lot in terms of like how much people make, what our worth is, mm -hmm. how they do things. It was just like this whole new world where we we're just soaking up so much information, even just talking to you, like learning what you know about youtube because yeah. you've been doing it for so long and so you know meeting up with people in the same niche um finding out you know what are the things that they do that works out um and agencies in general yeah. all that stuff mm -hmm. yeah so we learned a lot like yeah. like props to them you know yeah. back in the day we had no idea like anything in terms of like the business side of things yeah. um we didn't know how much we should be getting paid are we being lowballed yeah. whatnot so talking with friends and asking like how much because they were they were really like nice with open us about and they were it, very yeah. open about how much they made because they cared about us too. They didn't want us to get lowballed. So it was really helpful like talking to them mm -hmm. and being aware of our value. And I think that kind of goes into um, another tip that I have is to not be afraid to get help mm -hmm. from friends. And also before, um, before we have we had our manager, we were actually like independent, and we kind of wanted to try that out again and see if we would like um, answering emails, yeah. negotiating. But having our friend and our agent or manager, Ariana, <laughs> she's here with us right now, um, definitely mitigated a lot of the stressors that we had because I hate like reading contracts. Yeah. I um, and it's kind of hard negotiating for yourself yeah. and like pitching a higher budget because it feels kind of like weird. weird. So having Ariana help us out with that and help, having her, someone that we trust, help us with the financial and the legal and negotiating side yeah. Yeah. definitely helped. So I, I believe that truly like building the right team definitely is will work to your advantage and we've actually I don't know if you know this we she went to my high school I've known her for like 10 oh, yeah. 12 yeah. years so it's been I'm a, a mind reader minute. I knew no <laughs> uh, we, we actually chatted uh, yeah. last night a little bit awesome. about it um, but shout outs to the managers and the agents yeah. and yeah. Uh, the people behind the scenes so um, as you guys know I got my start on YouTube managing mm -hmm. Judy. So yeah. wow. um, it's already hard enough creating content, right? And then you have to talk about contracts. Yeah, it's and, so tough. You know, like uh, uh, dealing with the business side, like yeah. setting up your company and a bookkeeping, accounting, paying taxes oh and gosh. all that kind of you stuff. Should, you, got, you don't even know how many how much taxes we got. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we, won't say it, we won't say it on <laughs> we here publicly. We had no idea because oh, yeah. we got into it not thinking it was going to yeah. be a business. And then all of a sudden, all this pressure and responsibility 
responsibilities just got put onto yeah. us yeah. and we we're like, shoot, we don't know what to do. So we got an accountant. My mom was our bookkeeper. Um, we got our manager and yeah. the team, INF agency. They're great. So it yeah. helps. And so finally feel like, okay. Yeah. I think it's really important. Of course, you know, um, I, I know what I brought to the table and how I helped Judy succeed to mm -hmm, the next mm -hmm. level but when it's all said and done it's you guys the talent mm -hmm. the creators the influencers who uh, make the magic happen and I know now because I'm creating content you know like mm -hmm, how hard it mm -hmm. is and what goes through your brain and the things you have to consider and the things you have to deal with as well as how hard it is not only to put out great content and be different and gain attention but keep it up yeah. for years and years and years and so we're going to go into Q&A here we're going to wrap this up so I just I guess what would be the last Last thing you want to uh, leave with the audience before we get into Q and A uh, for people just starting YouTube channels, Instagram accounts. Um, they want to become an influencer, or they want to get views on videos and obviously get attention so that they can pursue their passions like you guys do with fashion. What would be your last uh, 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 pieces of wisdom? I I think like just never or it's never too late to start because I think we always have this like these inhibitions like oh it's not going to work out this way mm. but you'll never know unless you try I think yeah. failure is your biggest teacher like yeah. unless you fail in something you won't know the ropes to how to get there and I think yeah like we failed a couple of times we got you know we've got we've done wrong things but like I think through that we've learned how to better ourselves yeah yeah. Do you want to dive into a failure or a mistake? Well, okay. So I <laughs> naively signed a two-year automatic renewal contract that uh, gave away thirty percent of our monetary ad. Set. Oh, crazy! <laughs> yeah, we we were we just started off and we're like, oh shoot, this is a great network. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, but we were very naive, didn't know. But at the end of the day, we didn't beat ourselves up. Yeah. We just were like, okay, it's not going to be forever until we can sign off of this. Yeah. It's a two-year contract. Yeah. What? what's you know it ended up being four years because like i said automatic renewal yeah. but we got out and through that now we know okay yeah. get the right agency and, you know? yeah yeah exactly yeah, all that stuff and read yeah. your contracts read yeah. your contracts thankfully you haven't been so uh, so we, no, i was gonna say so <laughs> we didn't get sued yet so <laughs> so cassie yeah. what would be your last uh, advice for people just starting out on on digital media generally is, I think it's really to hone in on your passion, no matter we how weird you yeah. think the niche would be, because there's always a little pocket of like people that want to listen and want yeah. to hear you out. Um, I actually found this YouTube channel like last year, and I didn't know it existed, but um, I think it's Taylor Nicole Dean. She does like aquariums and like reptile kind of videos, and I started watching it, and I was so fascinated. I'm yeah. not even I don't have reptile. I used to have a lizard and like fish, but like I'm not into that kind of thing. But I saw like like her audience was, was so dedicated yeah. to um, watching her take care of her pets. And you would never think like something like that could blow up and she could uh, create a business out of it. So yeah. really like any little thing, if you like to knit, if you like collecting yeah. cards, like people enjoy that. Yeah. Tap into yeah. niches that aren't oversaturated because like stuff like ASMR wasn't a thing yeah. two yeah. years ago. I love ASMR. Yes. Yeah. We can bring the chips <laughs> over here. Oh, the chips. Oh the my chips. God. So <laughs> Some people don't like ASMR, but I fall asleep to it like at least twice a week. Well, thank you so much yeah. for everything that you shared. Yeah. I, I love the stories. Even I, I felt I learned so much from hearing about the behind the scenes and the thinking be, uh, you know, behind the lens mm -hmm. and the editing and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have a question for you guys out there. Do you need more help on editing photos or video? Let us know. And what platforms are you planning to upload, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook? Uh, put that in the comments area. Make sure you pick up a copy of here, YouTube Secrets right here. I can't grab it right now. Oh, here, <laughs> let me get this right here. All right, cool. Let's go wide on this. Make sure you guys yeah. pick up YouTube secrets at the links below. We're gonna put uh, their links as well in the description area. You can go to tubesecretsbook.com, by the way, to get uh, a copy of that. But uh, if you guys want to see our interview with them, go ahead and click or tap the screen right here. If you want to see a playlist for beginners starting out on YouTube, click or tap the screen right here. And now. We're going to. <laughs>